Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host, as you know, hopefully. And I'm here for another car review, a quick one on this 2023 Land Rover Range Rover Sport for P440E PHEV. A lot of stuff to say, but I'm going to explain a little bit more about this vehicle. And thank you very much for taking the time to watch the show. First of all, as always, I want to thank the OEM, in this case, um, Jaguar Land Rover, for allowing me the use of this press vehicle for a few days. So I've been able to spend some time with it and let you know a little bit more about the capabilities of this rather impressive vehicle, obviously. And I'm not going to go into a lot of details about the Land Rover Range Rover products because they've been out for a long time. But this one and a couple models that are coming to North America are special because they have a pretty large battery pack in their PHEV option. And that's what I look for. So sit back, relax and enjoy the show. All right, so first, I mean, I can say to start that I've been very impressed with this vehicle. You know, again, I'm not a really big SUV person and I've never really driven a Land Rover product for any amount of time. I've been in them, of course, but never drive one for any period of days. And I'm very impressed with these products. I mean, the Rollers use them. A lot of dignitaries use these. These are all around the world, well-used vehicles. They're not cheap, of course, but they're very popular because of the capabilities that they have, especially in 4x4 and, and some, some semi-extreme environments. You know, you can, you can, these are quite capable vehicles. But the reason I picked this up is because of the plug-in hybrid version of it. So, you know, from a design perspective, this is going to fit right in, right? It's going to fit into the sea of Range Rover, Land Rovers that are out there, especially these sport models, which is a nice size, five passenger size. It's going to fit right in. It's got tailpipes as well because it does have an engine. I'm going to talk about some of the specs, but from a design standpoint, it's a really pretty design. You know, I've had people come up to me and in and, and a park and stuff and say, hey, that's a really lovely car. And they've done a great job in the design language. I would like this probably model and trim that lineup versus anything else in their lineup by far. I think they've really done a great job with this. So, you know, it's it's a it's retains that prestige styling that they have, um, you know, that with that um, uh, again, something that they've had for a long time with the existing lines that they have, as you can see by all the video and stuff here. It's just a really nice looking vehicle. Uh, I was actually able to park this in my garage. So it's big, but just enough to get it into my garage still with the second car. So I do like that fact, but it's athletic. It's got a purposeful look to it. You know, it, it really has muscle and poise and panache, as some people have said. And that's, I guess, a way to summarize the Land Rover, Range Rover's products. And this Sport Edition is no less. So a really great design language from any angle that you look at. It's very pleasant to look at. Nice tires. This is a great color pattern that's on this one. I've seen some white and black and some others, but I really, really love this color palette. They've done a great job, especially in the interior. Now let me get into some of the power and the specs. All right, so I'm just trying to get this shoot in before the sun sets. I've limited on time, so I'm going to try to speed through this. But as I mentioned, power and specs, this is a very capable vehicle. Now, yes, it does have an internal combustion engine, right? It's a 3.0 liter inline V6 turbo. Uh, I'm not really going to focus on that because there's th these things have been out there and they're very capable, competent engines. What got me excited, though, about this vehicle is the EV component. In that plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, that PHAV, it's a very capable EV. So it's got an... Uh, 104 kilowatt EV motors. Uh, oh, this is an all-wheel drive version. And when you combine that with the gas, you get 434 horsepower and 457 pound-feet of torque. It's not like we would be used to from an all-electric standpoint, really quick off the line without engaging that gas engine. The gas engine needs to kick in. It's very capable to move you off the line, and I've been using this in EV mode as much as possible. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that coming up. But with that engine and the battery pack and the motors and everything engaged, it's a pretty capable vehicle uh, and it'll get you around quite fast. What got me excited, as I mentioned, is the battery pack. Land Rover has doubled the battery pack previous um, uh, models of PHEVs. And this now has a 38.2 kilowatt hour battery pack. My goodness, that's almost as much as my 2018 Nissan Leaf had as an all electric vehicle. Now, yes, this is a bigger, heavier vehicle, but that's quite a capable battery pack because what it gives you from an EPA estimated range standpoint is about 88 kilometers or 55 miles. So that is phenomenal plug-in hybrid only range. And I can tell you, I've been achieving pretty close to those range this entire few days I've been driving. So as a daily use, you know, driving where most people drive 30, 40, you know, 50, 60 kilometers a day on average, right? This is a great vehicle for helping you not only have running this vehicle in zero emissions most of the time, but also saving gas. I'm going to talk about numbers at the end. 
And this is supported by really good home charging. 7.2 kilowatt is average for home, but up to 50 kilowatt as well in DC fast charging. It's a CCS combo connector on here for North America. Gives you 10 to 80% in 55 minutes. Now that's long. And most people who are gonna buy this and go on longer road trips probably aren't going to DC fast charge. They're just gonna use gas to get there. Because I think, you know, at, at 50, 60 kilometers, you know, on highway driving, let's say, because you're not gonna be that efficient, maybe 70 on, on nice weather like this, you're, but you're gonna drive four, five, 600 kilometers, you're gonna rely mainly on gas. So most likely you're not gonna stop, but it does have that capability sh should you choose to do so. Just quickly show you the interior here because um, it's a, just a fantastic, beautiful interior. Workmanship, quality of, of button switches, materials. This has, a, I believe, a bit of an upgraded leather interior. Very comfortable seats. They're massaging, they're heated cooling. Uh, extremely comfortable seats. Uh, beautiful riding position as well. And of course, you've got your display here. Let me just climb in. Sorry for blocking you. So as you can see here, uh, nice display. Turn it on and you've got your binnacle, all kinds of information, you know, I've been driving this today a little bit and I've still got 71% of battery charge. So I've been trying to drive this all the time in battery only. Uh, lots of haptic controls on the steering wheel for different elements from speed, music, all your standard stuff really um, on that. Um, start this up so we get some stuff here. And I'll close the door because it's gonna bong at us. There we go. Nice digital cluster. You can change some of the looks here if you want um, and get some stuff done. Then the nice 12.3 inch main interface uh, gets a little bit fingerprinty in some of the glare. You could probably put a matte finish on it, but it's really nice, comfortable, all that kind of stuff. You, know, you can, I've changed the, the way that these cards show so I can see the EV status, but lots of functionality through different apps. I've turned on haptic control. So there's lots of things here. Good nav, good quality screen, not a whole lot of ton of EV information other than your charge, some of your energy consumption when you're actually driving and then some charging elements of how you want to set the charging and any preconditioning on here um, otherwise you know very capable vehicle i mean weight sensing you can definitely do some off-road and some uh, you know launch traction i haven't done any of that even gives you the dimensions in case you're not sure if you can fit this thing in an underground parking so pretty cool stuff i won't get into all this nice cameras as well uh show you that quickly nice big cameras you can either get you can even get um you know some visual digital aspects of it here through 3D renderings. You can engage certain cameras, certain viewpoints if you want to see behind you, the front sides, the front center. Lots of capability is great for parking. It has uh, parking features as well. I have not tried it, um, but you know, really capable vehicle with all that stuff. The uh, um, HVAC is really nice to operate. Um, simple buttons, just takes a little practice to get used to. Your gear shifter here, uh, good cubby storage here for stuff, for cup holders, you can cover that up in a fair size. Um, center now this actually has an option for a refrigerator so that's actually a cooler in there believe it or not with uh, that's cooling down my ev revolution show business card so there you go turn that on you put some pop or something in there keeps it nice and cool has uh, two glove boxes got a top one and there we go top one and a bottom one if i open that up here so the bottom one and the top one with even a usb plug for charging so lots of storage options here big glove box um and just, you know, really comfortable interior here in the front. All kinds of stuff with the panoramic opening sunroof as well. Well done. Beautiful interior. So look at the rear here. Very similar setup. Very nice touch. Meridian 3D sound system is very, very nice. I have to admit, you know, I always like to see a little bit bigger door pockets, but that's enough to put, a, you know, a can of something or some stuff in here. Uh, again, beautiful colored interior that this has with powered seats and the ability to recline those as well. Uh, nice big center armrest if I flip it out here with cup holders and I guess the storage options as well. Put a game thing or something. I don't know what you'd put in there. But interesting elements. You've got your heating controls down here. Just a beautiful big cabin to be in. Nice and comfortable. Again, power folding seats. So easy to put them up and they're power up and they're power down as well. So there's no manual in those uh, putting those seats up and down. Beautiful seat. A beautiful environment to be in. All right, so getting into this vehicle is gonna be a no-brainer. You know, I like to do that. This door opens almost 90 degrees, so it's quite wide. So if you're in a parking lot, you need to have that space. But, you know, it is super easy to get in here. Nice, uh, you have to kind of climb in a bit. Tons of leg room. I've got the room where I am. Seats can recline a little bit back here. Everything's powerful, power up as well. Very capable, grab handles everywhere. Um, independent rear. This has the rear uh, air conditioning and heating back here, heated seats. Part of the moonroof, lots of room. I've got more than a fist of headroom. Uh, it's just a really pleasant experience to be back here. 
Now quickly from a cargo capacity, this is a five passenger uh, SUV, as I said, large size SUV. It's got air suspension, so it goes up and down. It's got nice ride height adjustability. It's got really good cargo space for a five passenger. I, I'm glad they kind of didn't try to shove a third row in here because it just wouldn't have fit. It would have been no, no space at all behind here. And because this is a plug-in hybrid, there is no front, right? It's just a V6 engine. I'm not even going to show you that because it's got a cowl covering it. So you really don't see much from an engine, you know, some struts and a place to put your windshield, wash your fluid and check your oil. That's about it. So the main part of what to show you from cargo is back here in the aft. Um, behind the second row, you get 784 liters or about 27.6 cubic feet. You drop that second row though behind the first and you get six, uh, 1,761 liters, that's what I'm trying to say, and 62.1 cubic feet. So you can actually throw quite a lot of stuff in here. And I've been hauling some stuff around a little bit here and there, all my camera gear and stuff that I'm here today filming with no problems at all. Just give you some quick driving thoughts and impressions on this vehicle. Um, it's been a really nice vehicle to drive for this entire week. It's comfortable, it's quiet, I've got the sunroof popped a little bit so you might do a little bit of air noise, but all in all just a fantastic vehicle. So, you know, you're getting a high quality vehicle at this price point. It's well equipped, well appointed, you're going to love it. What really pleasantly surprised me again was how the EV powertrain performed um, in my few days of testing. You know, the, the range that this vehicle predicts from an EV perspective is actually almost bang on. It's really, really accurate and it's good, you know, for daily ranges. I'll come up with some numbers uh, coming up at the end of the show here, so stay tuned. You know, you can see how you can save some money on this and I know it's an expensive car, but people are all about saving money. Uh, from a driving, handles well. It's got the air suspension, you can lift it, you can go a little higher clearance, a little lower clearance. I kind of keep this in auto mode. Um, it's just got all the creature comforts that you're going to want and need in a very pleasant environment, in a safe environment, a very sound product. So I, I'm not sure what else to say for my driving other than this has been a delight to drive. I definitely feel like I'm a royal, royal driving around, taking my wife around as well this week. She really loved the seats and found it very comfortable and quiet as well and enjoyable. Um, it does not have one pedal driving. So from an EV standpoint, uh, it does, it doesn't really, it just has basically, when you're in EV mode, it does provide some regeneration when you hit the, the brake. Further, it gives you more generation and of course you can get full generation, regeneration, excuse me, back on that as well uh, by, by slowing down quite, by quite a lot. So if you really use the brake, but there, there is no paddles to switch or anything like that to get stronger regen. It's just factory set. Um, and I've been running an EV mode. There is a hybrid mode or a save mode, which will save your power, but run the engine. But I've been trying to run this with as minimal a gas. And again, I'm going to have a, uh, a sheet coming up, which will show you my range of what my usage has been in the, in the few days that I've been driving this. So it's something that you can do. I, I have found in the cool morning, one morning, the engine kind of kicked in when I gave it a little bit of power to kind of merge with some traffic. And it took about five minutes for the engine to kind of uh, stop running you know even though I kept trying to put it into EV mode it says EV mode temporary unavailable so I guess that's because the engine kicked in and it needs to lubricate and circulate that oil for a little bit of time since it's already working and it's been cold to kind of warm up to a point where that it can shut off safely just to keep help maintain the engine part of this the the uh, six cylinder engine so that makes sense to me but I I've been trying to go all week without engaging the engine is all uh, just basically mainly city driving I did do some uh, highway driving as well which was really nice so again pleasant experience very nice thumbs up you love the driving you'll feel like you're really special in this vehicle so hope you enjoyed the driving and that information there now i wanted to just you know again talk about you know this is a very capable vehicle right um, these kind of products uh, they're great in the winter trudging through snow you need good tires great traction again with the batteries that adds a nice nicer weight distribution into this vehicle it's not all front heavy with the engine so it does balance it out a little bit better uh, i found the handling to be quite well it is a little top heavy of course being what it is and still having remnants of an engine or an engine there but it's much better uh, than the ice version would be from a handling but it's not you know you're not going to track this thing kind of thing it's it's a really purposeful vehicle and the key i guess to this vehicle is in the the plug-in hybrid aspect i'm really glad that they've put a big battery in here i would love to see an all electric version of this don't get me wrong absolutely but giving you that kind of range and um uh you know and, and again i talked about uh, some of the range uh that i've actually have or are coming up in the video it has been really good especially you know in good all the all kind of purposeful driving right driving around the city doing your errands day by day 
So that's kind of really the star for this vehicle is that it's got a really big battery and it's capable enough to drive most of the time in your daily use in all EV mode, providing again, you charge it up every night. In a level two charger, it takes about four hours or so. In a wall socket, it's gonna take a little longer, so it is worth a bit of an investment in a level two. Now, if I run some numbers based on what I got and what I've been able to read, you know, it seems like the average um, uh, battery use for daily driving for this is gonna be probably like around 70 to 75% of your use. And if I, if I peel some numbers up, across here, looking at 20,000 kilometers of driving in a year, and I figure out how much, you know, 75% of that would be e all electric driving and how much that would cost to charge versus gas, um, basically run the numbers and you can email me if you want more of a breakdown because it's kind of long-winded, but basically I calculate you'd save about 4,000 to 4,500 a year Canadian just by plugging this in, in, in every night and driving it as much as you can in EV mode. Now, obviously in the winter, you're not gonna get that range. So I balance my numbers out to kind of an average to calculate for the nice summer and the, and the poor winter, obviously range that you're gonna get and came out with about four to four, 4,500. Now, why that's important, because now let's talk about pricing. MSRP pricing on this is over 120,000 and my model is, is just north of $130,000, um, 123 and change for the base. And this one came out at 130, what if I find my number, 139 with the options and shipping and all that kind of stuff. So 100, almost 140,000 Canadian, not a cheap vehicle. Now, from a base perspective, however, if I were to look at, um, at a base uh, Land Rover, Range Rover Sport product, a non-plug-in hybrid, it comes out at about 114,000 Canadian. This base is 123,000. Again, it's been optioned out. So if I just compare it base to base, it's about a 9K, 9 to 10K difference. If I'm saving 4,000 to 4,500 a year, um, I'm going to be able to recoup that extra money that I'm spending on a battery in about two to three years. And I think those are the kind of numbers that you need to run if you're thinking of buying a vehicle in this class and at that price point. Again, I see it on a lot of my videos now and I'm gonna to continue to say it. You're doing yourself a disservice if you're not looking at something with a plug as a minimum because there is a financial savings. Now you might say, hey, people that can spend 130,000, they're not worried about saving money. Well, I don't think that that's accurate. Everybody's worried about saving money these days, even if you can afford something like this. And people will, you know, just because somebody has this car, you know, they could be financing it for nine years. I mean, I've seen people buy Teslas and they string it for eight, nine years as the average now because they want one so bad. So don't judge people because of the price point of the vehicle. There always is some savings. And again, it's not just the financial side, it's the environmental impact, right? If I'm lowering my greenhouse gas emissions by about 70, 75% over a comparable internal combustion version, I'm doing the world a favor by doing that. So I'd love you to go all electric, but I know in this car it doesn't have one. So, you know, look at those kind of aspects of good plug-in hybrids and calculate the numbers for you and see how it works. But, you know, this makes this a very compelling vehicle. Just wanted to quickly show you the range log that I keep. Um, as you can see by this, the, the uh, displayed starting range was fairly consistent. I mean, we've had nice warm temperatures uh, this week and then got really warm towards the end of the week. Um, but over the few days that I had it, you can see it's fairly consistent around that 85 to 90 kilometer uh, full st uh, represented range for a full state of charge at 100%. And as I drove, you know, it, it went down and I think that the summary here is that it's fairly accurate. There was one day where the engine kicked in in the morning um, after I just tried to accelerate a little quickly to get into traffic and then it stayed on for about five minutes or so, five to ten minutes, um, simulating a use of about seven kilometers of gas, I guess, is what it told me. Um, it was like a, you know, 0 0.02 or something liters per 100 overall. So very, very minimal gas use. But again, the goal was to try to drive in all electric just as much as possible in normal, you know, doing my normal stuff, like not uh, just charging it in the morning and then doing my daily driving and see what I ended up with. And for most of the days, I wasn't going too, too far, as you can see. So the kilometers projected ended up being 219. It actually went over that uh, almost uh, 10 over. So that's good. That means that they're fairly accurate in their um, projection guidance, at least in the warmer temperatures and that um, you can safely use this, or at least confidently use this, 
to do a good percentage of your daily drive. Uh, hopefully this helps from an, a real use case and a real life uh, driving. And it's just normal traffic and uh, with some city and a little bit of highway thrown in as well. All right, so I'm gonna wrap up this show because I've got airplanes flying. I've got guys with motorbikes booting around. This was a quiet space five minutes ago and all of a sudden it's getting loud. So I'm gonna wrap this up, but I hope you found this review and this information informative because, you know, again, I try to push the electrification agenda as much as possible. And because of that, I try to bring you value in the information that I give and try to relate it to the, to the consumer needs, right? Um, you know, this is a beautiful vehicle. Yes, it's got prestige and it's a lot of money. There are vehicles that are more expensive than this. So, you know, again, don't just look at the cost, but from a capability as an EV and to help lower greenhouse gas emissions, this is certainly a vehicle to look at if you don't want to make the leap to all electric. And there are other brand all electric offerings, but this is a very capable vehicle. It's definitely a thumbs up for me uh, because of the capability, just like the Mitsu Outlander is at a lower price point. Again, with its capabilities and savings, just like the Pacifica hybrid minivan, plug-in hybrid minivan is, the only minivan in North America that has a plug. And again, you'd save a couple of grand a year and money on that as well if you're in that market. So that's what you need to look at, you know, plus the additional safety and stuff that all electric technology gives you in the weight and that extra rigidity and stuff. But these are pretty solid, so vehicles, so I wouldn't worry about that. But again, definitely a recommend something you look at if you're looking at a vehicle in this class and you, you want the Land Rover, then definitely look at the plug-in hybrid because you, you might spend a little more up front, but you're going to make that back in a really positive manner and help you help the planet while you do that. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. I hope you enjoyed this edition. Thank you very much for tuning in. Again, I want to thank Land Rover or JLR Canada for allowing me the use of this vehicle for a few days. Uh, it's been excellent driving this around. I really did feel like royalty driving this around. It's super comfortable and very quiet in EV mode. Very nice vehicle, so well done. All my information on how to contact me and stuff is coming up. I'd love to hear from you. If you have questions or comments, please put them in YouTube. Uh, always thanks to my Patreon supporters. All your names are coming up at the end of the show. And if you're going again to Fully Charged Live, I will see you out there. Um, and, uh, you know, hope to see lots of people in here story. So until the next episode, please, everybody stay safe. And thank you for tuning in. And I will see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.